Welcome to Bigfoot Society. In this episode, I welcome back Mark Paul from episode 256 from Clay County, Tennessee. I reached out to Mark to see if things had gotten better, and as you'll find out, things have only just escalated. So you'll really want to buckle up for this episode. If you've experienced something similar in the Clay County, Tennessee area, please reach out to me immediately after this episode. And if you've had an encounter yourself and you'd like to be on the show, please contact me at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. To get weekly members-only episodes of the podcast, make sure you head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society and become a supporting member today. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking to Mr. Mark Paul. Uh, I talked to Mark way back in episode 256. This is back, I think, in May of 2023. Mark's an individual uh, from down in Clay County, Tennessee. He's been having a lot of interesting things happen uh, on his property all the way since 1996. So, Mark, I'm glad to have you back on, and I'm going to give it right over to you, sir. It's a privilege, Jeremiah, to have the opportunity to come back on and, and talk about what's been going on around here. Uh, to give the listeners a little um, background, it all started in 1996, and we would have something tremendously, uh, you know, big hit the side of the house, and uh, uh, we bought a mobile home new uh, when I bought this place, and um it would come and and like uh, once every couple of weeks would just you know really slap the hard the house really hard, and uh, I would make up excuses you know uh, my wife would say what where was that you know and I'd say oh that was a a deer run into the house or that was an owl that flew into the side of the house I'd make up excuses because I I actually thought that's what it was. I, you know, never into Bigfoot, never, I've, I'd only heard of Bigfoot one time back in 1974 around this area uh, where a girl had said that she was babysitting uh, for a husband and wife that went out on the town and uh, for one night and went to a movie and she was babysitting her kids and said she was in the living room and looked at the uh, living room window and there was a, what she described as a caveman looking in the window at her. And so fast forward to just went on, you know, nothing else, nothing else, uh, uh, you know, drastic, uh, no sounds, no, nothing else but house slaps went on until uh, December of 2022. And um, I had just quit working and semi-retired at the time. And so I was always gone working, you know, out of town. And so, um, uh, I never was here much, you know, for for quite a few years. And so um, in December of 2022, we noticed our dogs started doing a lot of barking. Every, every dog around here started barking. And so uh, this thing wouldn't show itself. We knew it was wouldn't wasn't a coyote or anything like that. We knew it was, but we still didn't know it was anything like a Bigfoot because we never saw it. And so then, uh, you know, uh, I started doing some research and I ran into your channel, Jeremiah. And that's when I started to find out, you know, by listening to all these other people, yeah, the house slaps, the, the you know, other things going on. And so uh, the action really started to pick up. Um, and, and, you know, with other things happening and then we started hearing screams and I think these creatures were wanting us to know that they were here. I think they were wanting attention just to let us know. Um, and so we did, we finally found out what it was and, um, I started seeing them from time to time last spring. First, I you know, you told me to go look for footprints, and uh, I've always been a hunter. I don't hunt anymore, but I've always been an avid hunter back in the day. I was in the Army for almost 12 years in the tank corps, and I've, I've always been an outdoorsman, a fisherman. And, you know, going back after me and you talked, going back in my mind, I've had a lot of encounters in the past but during the time that uh, things were walking around our camp, me and other friends would go fishing and hunting, and we'd always have something walking around our camp, but we never heard it make any noise, just tree snaps and, you know, heavy footsteps. Never heard nothing scream or anything. And we still, at that time, you know, 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, we didn't know what it was. And uh, we just knew it wasn't anything that, that we were, you know, uh, like coyotes and foxes and stuff of that nature. 
Um, we just, you know, never really gave it much thought after that night that it happened. So anyway, uh, yeah, going back in my mind, I've had a lot of encounters all through my life, but I'd never seen one. And okay, so we started seeing all kinds of signs that they leave. Like I said, by getting on your show is where I really figured out what was going on around here. The bend over trees, you know, the numerous, numerous, probably 50, 60 photos that I've sent you, the footprints in the snow, the leaps, you know, uh, back this uh, winter. Uh, anyway, going back, uh, that's when I figured out that, uh, you know, that what was causing this, the trees started noticing. I started paying attention, Jeremiah, to what was being said on your show. And so I took that uh, knowledge and I started looking around to see if I could see these signs that people had been talking about. And sure enough, I started seeing a lot of signs. First, it was footprints. Then it was bent over trees. And, uh, and, uh, Huh? Bones. Oh yeah, the bone. Something left. Uh, that one of these bigfoots left a cow bone in my backyard last spring. And you know what? I don't think that's a cow bone. I think it's a hip bone from a bigfoot, because it is huge, Jeremiah. I just, with everything in me, I do not believe. I've had a, I've had a, a year to think about it, because it's got an X and a Y scratched on it. A bigfoot. And how I know it's a big foot is my girlfriend has seen one, so we know that that's what's going on here. She's seen one face to face, but I'll get to that in a minute. This so was out here more in the yard, and I noticed a big old bone, a hip bone. I thought it was a a bone from a cow. The hip bone is the biggest bone in a in a cow. If, it, if that's what it is, I really don't know. But the more I thought about it, and I got to looking at it, it had an X scratched on it and a Y, like a fork stick scratched on it. And um, I got to thinking about that, and I believe that's what it is. I believe it's a hip bone from a Bigfoot because um, fast forward a little bit, you know, we started, my girlfriend saw one uh, 30 yards away, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, face to face, basically. And um, I'll get into that in a minute, but uh, start seeing all of the, uh, you know, I got so much to tell. It's, and I'm kind of jumping back and forth because. You know, I could talk all night about the stuff that's happened around here. Well, they uh, started throwing stuff at our house. You know, that had never happened before, only the slaps. So they started throwing small nuts, hickory nuts and stuff like that, and small rocks. If we tried staying up after 11 o'clock at night, they'd start throwing stuff on our house to let us know it's time for us to go to bed. Now, I'll, t I'll tell you something, Jeremiah. These things, we, we own the day, but I'm going to tell you something, they own the night. And when it gets dark around here, you can go anywhere in my neighborhood and you'll see Christmas lights stretched up in people's yards and you won't see anybody in my neighborhood out after dark. If you do, they're coming out of their vehicle and going straight into the house. And so um, getting back to that, that hip bone, you know, those pictures I sent you, you know, I started finding the forked limbs hanging everywhere about head high in all of the trees around here. I started finding, I found one forked limb that was four foot tall over in my orchard. And so I guess the first, um, the really first scare I had from one is I come out the front door last June and I got an orchard here next to my house about 50 yards away. And I heard something take out of that orchard and it sounded like, um, it sounded like an elephant running off from my orchard. I have never in my life heard nothing that size. And that's how I know it was a Bigfoot, because there's nothing else that big that can make a, a noise like that running off. Jeremiah, this thing had to have been a giant, because when it left out of my orchard, I mean, it literally scared me to death. I never heard anything even close to that. Like I said, it sounded like an elephant on TV. Well... Uh, then, like I said, started finding all these forked limbs and four foot forks standing up over there in my orchard. And they was, I think they were doing this to make to, to see if I was paying attention. You know, like I said, they'd hang them about head high. And um, so time went on, okay. And then I started finding them. And so then in July, um, this is uh, while I was talking to you, you know, I was asking for your prayers and stuff and for everybody to pray for us. Our house was being hit basically every night there for two or three months. Well, 
it finally come to a head. And one night I come in here and uh, we read the Bible a lot and um, a lot. And we pray a lot every day. It, I have all my life, you know, very close to the Lord. I always have been. So I told my girlfriend I was going to read some Bible to her before we went to bed. And I sat down at the kitchen table, and I hadn't read more than two sentences out of the Bible. And I didn't see it do it, but I know what it was. Um, a Bigfoot ripped out our kitchen window and threw it on the ground. And that's the most terrified Jeremiah that I've ever been in my entire life. My girlfriend said I was white as a sheet of paper. I immediately jumped up from the table, and I heard it. I heard its claw marks scratching on the side of the house before the window coming. I jumped up and ran there in the closet and got my shotgun, and I went outside on the front deck and I said, "I am going to blow the head off of the first one I see." I said, "If I see one of you, I'm going to blow your head off." And so I pranced around out there on the deck for a while, and I come back in the house prancing around, making sure that they could see me. I was making sure they could see me with that gun. I held that gun up in the air right in the window and did that all night. My girlfriend, uh, she went on to bed a couple hours later, shaking to the core, and I just decided I was going to stay up all night because I figured I was going to try to come in the house, but they didn't. And I'll tell you what, ever since that I scolded them really hard and I rebuked them in the name of Jesus Christ. And from that time on, we've not heard a whimper out of them much. They've not touched the house with a stone, a slout. Um, they've really quietened down. But now they still uh, come out every night. We see them every night, every single night. There are different colored ones. There's some here that's red. Uh, like an orange, not red, but an orange reddish color. There's some that is solid black, and we have a few that are cream colored. Uh, they look like French vanilla ice cream, that sort of, uh, you know, that sort of color. Uh, they love showing us their little ones. They'll hold their little ones up in there where we can see them. I take pictures. I've took so many pictures, Jeremiah. I've got over 700 pictures and probably 35 videos. <laughs> but these creatures, they're very smart. But we found out that they don't mean us any harm. Um, you know, they ever since that night, they ripped the wind out and I threatened them. They they really, whichever one done that, must have got a pretty good scolding because we, we've not... <laughs> Um, we've not heard any anything much out of them, but now um, we come in at dark. And uh, I got a story to tell you. Can my girlfriend tell you a little short story right quick? Um, um, so I'm fine with that as long as she okay. as long as she does a guest release after this. Yeah, I'll tell it to you then, Jeremiah. Okay, You'll sounds great. Thank you. I'll tell it to you. Okay. Uh, at three at three o'clock in the morning. She got up to go outside to get her glasses. She was going to, she forgot them in the car and was going to uh, read the Bible. And she went out there at three o'clock in the morning to get her glasses and they was in the glove box of our Honda. And so he goes out, and it's cold back in the winter. It's been about three months ago. And she goes out, gets in the car and turns the inside light on. She shuts the door, she opens up the glove box. Okay, gets the glasses out, and then when she turns the light off again, a Bigfoot was standing. She said it was about my height, about six foot tall. She said a six foot tall Bigfoot was standing right next to the car. She had had to been hunkered down, you know. She had to been on all fours because she didn't see it until it jumped up. Well, when she turned the light off in the car to come back in the house, it jumped up and jumped clean over the top of our grill out in the front yard. We got a smoker out there. And she said it cleared that grill like it wasn't even there and run off. And she told me the next morning, scared her to death. And um, and so, um, well, like I said, we see them every night. And, and uh, we see them out here. Uh, up and, and our dogs, we see them up until daylight too. And they, they leave our neighbor called me about two months ago. It ain't hardly been two months ago. She called me. She said, Mark, she said, something woke me up this morning 
at two o'clock beating on trees. She said something was banging on these trees out here in the backyard. And she said, it done that for 15 minutes. And she said she, she couldn't, you know, grasp it for a few minutes. She said her dogs came in the house and would not go back outside. Yeah, and it hurt one of her dog's hip. Um, this was last year that it hurt her a big uh, German Shepherd uh-huh. attack dog. It hurt her her uh, dog last last summer. It hurt his hip real bad. And anyway, uh, about the wood knocking, she said he did wood knocks for at least fifteen minutes, and they was not only beating on one tree but various trees at the same time. And she called me the next morning about nine o'clock. Like I said, it's been probably six, seven, eight weeks ago. And said and told me all about it, you know. And she says she hears them out there in her backyard every night. She said she'd been seeing a few cross the road right after dark coming over here to us. They they like our company for some reason though. They like to watch us in the house, you know. They sleep by our bedroom window. They haven't lately, but they slept next to our bedroom window for probably about three months back in the winter. Uh, my girlfriend said that as soon as that uh, she they hear me snoring, as soon as I got to sleep and they hear me snoring, she'd uh, see the eye shine come through our bedroom window, and she'd see um, uh, we've got a we got a, a light out here, a night light, a street light, if you will, and she said she'd see the dark shadow come up and uh, see eye shine and everything, and I'd go out there the next morning and look, and sure enough, one had laid there all night right by the bedroom window. But now they don't do much uh, until I go to sleep, and that's when they, I mean, yeah, we see them standing around, and the little ones running around, but um, they, they, but they, they've stopped that. They've not done it since springtime come. They did that back in the winter, like I said, for probably about three months. Uh, there'd be a big old bed laying our next to, right next to our bedroom window. And I mean, we know that they're not going to harm us, but we don't think they're going to. They ain't yet. I don't believe they will. But they just like it here for some reason or another. You know, they was here before I was, and so um, they're they're they ever since that night they ripped the wind out. They've been friendly. Uh, one pushed my front door. I got a thirty foot deck on the front, got it screened in, and um, I was sitting here. I have to have my phone up in the window, and that's why they come around here. I think at the night is they like watching me on the phone because we live you know eighteen miles from a store in any direction. Here in Clay County, live close to the Cumberland River. It's two miles away. Pretty good sized river. And like I said, I've got all kinds of pictures. I, I've uh, uh, went down there, and I know where a bunch of them stay down there on the river too. Seems like anywhere there's water, you'll find these creatures. But oh yeah, this happened two days ago. My girlfriend, uh, we've been out mushroom hunting, and that picture I, I sent you today, we found forty today. Two days ago, we was out behind the house, and of course, I heard them wood knocking today too. My girlfriend was with me, and she stopped and looked down in the hall, the direction they normally come from, where all the sign is, bowed over trees, and I keep a salt lake down there too. And as soon as she said, "I love you guys," that much more hadn't come out of her mouth, Jeremiah, and we heard four wood knocks, bam, 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 and then today. I basically hear wood knocks every time I go in the woods here lately since I started hunting. I've been hunting mushrooms maybe about a week. Every single time I get in the woods behind the house, I hear wood knocks. Not many, though, but I don't really pay any attention. Uh, I don't know if you can ever get used to the situation that we live in. I mean, there is a certain fear factor knowing these things are right outside the window of your house and laying all in your front yard. And I was going to tell you, two nights ago, I had one about waist high. He looked like he had a hood on uh, the fur or hair, whatever you want to call it, around their face. Looks like they're wearing a little hoodie. I had one two nights ago uh, push my front door open on the deck and whistled real loud. And my dog, she's not a scared, she's not scared of them. Uh, when she hears a tree snap like uh, night before, like, night before, like she'll go out and bark and run them off. He's not, none of the dogs around here are afraid of them. But now these big push could kill these dogs at the, you know, snap of a finger if they wanted to, of course. But uh, they don't, you know, they don't tire nothing up. I've had uh, Jeremiah, I know this might seem strange, 
uh, I've had uh, lips like like if if a human being walked up to my car and left a big kiss imprint in the frost on the side of my windows of my car, a couple of different times I've had big kiss lips, kiss marks on the side of my car, uh, and they they they're out there around the car every night. And like I said, um, the big ones, and some of the things I'll say might seem a little hard to believe for some people that's never been around these creatures, but there's a few here that I know are 12 foot or taller because I take pictures of them every night. And like I said, there's different colors. Uh, the little ones look like chimps. And that's what I, that's what they look like to me. They look like chimps. The big ones look sort of uh, half gorilla and half human. You know, I don't really know what they are, but that's what they look like to me. The little ones look like chimps. And all of the ones I've seen, uh, none of them hardly look the same. They all kind of look a little different. My girlfriend uh, went out last summer to scrape out, uh, you know, our breakfast scraps that we had for the animals, the dog we got, and the cat. She went out in the backyard, Jeremiah, and she had an iron skillet in her hand, and she bent over to rake the scraps out. And when she stood back up, she said it was at least 10 foot tall. A 10 foot tall Bigfoot stood up in the wood line, which is 30 yards away from her. And she got an eye to eye you know, an eye to eye contact with it. She she and this is what she said it looked like. She said it was at least ten foot tall, if not taller. It had a the things that stuck out the most, she said it had um big, super big, blowed up lips. The lips is what the lips and the nose is what really stuck out. She said it had uh uh about three inch hair uh didn't have any hair on his chest much, but it had three inch hair that hung down off its arms. Um, the nose was supersized. The lips were blowed up supersized. The eyes were black. It had medium sized ears back on its head. It had a round head. It had super duper long arms. It, its legs weren't as long as its arms. And she said its fingers were gigantic. And she said it had a soda can in its right hand because we we uh, collect our aluminum cans and sell them. And sometimes we'll pitch them out of the car when we come home and pitch them behind the house. We've got a container thing behind the house. We keep them in a 55 gallon plastic barrel back there. It had the sun. It was about 10 o'clock in the morning, Jeremiah, and the sun was reflecting. That's how she noticed it had a soda can in its right hand. The sun was shining uh, off of the aluminum can. And she said it stood there and looked at her for maybe 15 seconds, you know, looking at her from up and down. And she said um, it was four foot across the chest. And she said its arms were gigantic. She said the thing had gigantic biceps on it. And she said um, it looked at her for about 15 seconds and it turned all in one motion and walked off, and it was black. And she said the hair was shining off the sun, too. It had a, a slick black coat of hair on it. And uh, she said she noticed when it walked off how wide its back was. And uh, and I'm I'm a decent-sized man at my age. I'll be, I'm 62, and uh, she said it would make me look like a toothpick. And... Uh, that's just what she said, and it and it scared her. It uh, she cook she chain smoked for about I don't know three weeks. She couldn't sleep for a lot longer than that. Her chest got real tight when she seen it. Her blood pressure was off the chart, and I took her away from home for the rest of the day. We went out and, and went a few places, and and uh, she stayed quite a bit in fear for at least. You know, a couple of months after that, it shook her to her core. Um, like I said, they, they get right up against the house, and they'll hold their babies up in the air after dark. Now, they don't like light. If we turn the porch light on, they'll stay just back out 
of the light, but uh, we've got kind of thin uh, curtains, and if you keep the porch light off and, and close the curtains, you can see them right up against the deck out here. But like I said, they don't. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, we was out. This is the first time we've been out in our yard after dark in probably a year. We was, I'd raked up leaves all day during the night. I was out there burning them. And um, we basically knew we was going to see one real close. And sure enough, we seen, you know, three or four big ones. I couldn't tell how tall they were because it was dark, but they were big. We saw a couple down on all fours. Um, and we was out there maybe 30 minutes, maybe yeah, about an hour, about an hour after dark. And we are still burning these big piles of leaves. And they was one uh, probably about 50 yards from us behind the house. And that's the best scream that I've ever heard one do. It, it started out sounding like a siren, like a fire truck. It went from sounding like a siren to a, into a scream all in one, you know, all in one uh, motion. A siren into a scream. And then uh, every dog around here opened up and started barking, every dog in the neighborhood barking. And so we decided that uh, we'd better come on inside. And so we came on inside and we didn't hear nothing else, no more. No more uh, activity the rest of the night. But we can, if we want to see one, all we have to do is stay outside out here, you know, basically doing anything, talking. They don't like for us to be outside after dark. Um, I talked to one of my neighbors that lives oh, about a mile from me, and they've been run inside by them, too, after dark. He said there were some people over there one night that had just built a house down from him, and he had quite a bit of party was going on. People were drinking, shooting guns. They were out there cooking out, and he said all of a sudden uh, they heard a bunch of trees snapping, and one of these Bigfoot screamed out real loud and started growling, and he said, you ought to have seen, he was out in his front yard too, and he said, you ought to have seen those people running in the house. He actually thought this was his own house, and he told me, I've known uh, Randy uh, for about 25 years, and he told me back in uh, sometime around 2000 that he saw what he thought was a female and a young one. Could have been a male, he didn't know, but there was a young one and a much bigger one. He said they come up out of the woods on all fours. They had to climb a little bit of an embankment there. He said once they got up on the gravel road, they stood up, walked across the road, and then went back on all fours and went back on the other side of the, into the woods there in which basically that's how they come to my house they cross over from uh, one ridge uh, and in jeremiah there's so much wilderness out here it's ridiculous they cross over from one ridge and come into come into the hollow behind my house and um there's a you know some of the, i've sent you i don't know how many pictures of, of crazy stuff uh, but there's down here on the Cumberland River, we know where there's a spot you can go. And people have just basically abandoned the place. They were from, uh, this is about two miles from my house. They were some uh, uh, construction workers down there. Um, they were going to put in some buildings. It was the state of Tennessee. Uh, state workers were down there. And me and Sonia, my girlfriend, just happened to show up right after, well, we knew something went on. But they were chainsaws laying everywhere and equipment laying anywhere. You know, if anybody would have been a thief, they could have uh, packed up a whole truckload of chainsaws and all kinds of toolboxes and stuff and took off with them, but we didn't bother anything. And we happened to look up, and about 80 or 100, I'd say 100 feet in a tree, one had broke off a big tree limb and stripped it. Uh, well, this is more like a log. It's not a tree limb. They broke the top of the tree out. The tree's probably 100 years old. They broke the top of the tree out and stripped all of the, the big foot stripped all of the limbs off of it and left that up there as a sign for them guys not to come back down there. And they basically run them guys off and they haven't been back, Jeremiah. Whatever they was going to construct down there, they've never done it. They've left out and never did come back. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just an everyday occurrence. And, you know, for anybody, I want to say this, too. 
for anybody that thinks I'm, you know, full of it or whatever. I challenge anyone, if they want to see a Bigfoot, get a hold of Jeremiah and he can get a hold of me. And I will guarantee you, if you want to see one, come to my house and I'll show you one anytime after dark, any day of the week. And, um, and we'll solve that, you know, right here and right now. If anybody thinks I'm full of it, I'll show you just how much I ain't full of it. But Jeremiah, they leave claw marks out here on our front deck. You sent pictures. I sent you pictures of that. They leave claw marks. And about, probably about two months ago, they left, one left a big a claw mark out in the front yard. We went to the grocery store and came back and it, it was fresh. They had, um, left a big i sent you the pictures you know what i'm talking about jeremiah they left a big claw mark two actually two claw marks out there but big rock or something uh huh big rock on the oh yeah there was one left a big rock on my igloo cooler about three nights ago i go out the front deck and one left me a gift it was a, a big red whatever I'm not a geologist, but it left a big red rock laying on top of my igloo cooler right here just as I step off the deck. So, you know, I always, when I first get up in the morning, first thing I do is I walk, I get me a cup of coffee and walk around the house to see, you know, oh, to see if they've done anything. Jeremiah, these things, these, these creatures, whatever they are, they're very intelligent. Uh, just to tell you a thing of how smart they are, they have drawn on the side of our house X's and Y's, and uh, I believe these creatures have a have a language, and I'll tell you why. If you look at that peanut, that picture of that peanut butter, I got to feeding them last summer, and they got to taking the food every night right at dusky dark. They love peanut butter and they love loaf bread. They love apples. Yeah. And Jeremiah, these creatures are not greedy. I would take four apples over there and they would take two and they would leave two and we got to feed them every night well that went on for about three months i'd hang it up about head high in a tree over there in a, in a grocery bag a plastic grocery bag well we missed a couple of nights and didn't feed them and and uh these bigfoot figured that we were running low of food too since we hadn't missed since we started we hadn't missed a night of feeding them we missed a couple of nights and they must have figured that we was kind of having it hard too by not, you know, by missing two nights. And so they haven't took food from us since. We missed two nights. They haven't took anything from us since. And we put everything out there, but they just won't take it. They're very smart, Jeremiah, is what I'm trying to say. These things are humble. Yeah. And whatever they are, they're very smart. And they can draw really well with their claws. Yeah. Um, give you some kind of insight on how good they can draw. Um, last fall, me and my girlfriend out here in the backyard, and uh, she was singing to them, and they would thump every time she'd sing a song. She was singing that song by Dolly Parton called Working Nine to Five. And every time she would finish singing that song, one would thump its chest, maybe 40, 50 yards from us behind the house. And you could hear it where it was loud, too, in a deep thump. And um, uh, one of these giant pea-leaded woodpeckers flew over our head and lit down in the woods and started hammering on a tree, sound like a jackhammer. And the next day, what happens? I get up the next day and we go out there and uh, and I looked at that and I just shook my head. That Bigfoot had drawed the head of a pea-leaded woodpecker on the side of my house. I mean, it looked just like I couldn't have drawn a picture that good of a pity woodpecker's head. I mean, it's crazy, the stuff that these things do. And I know there's going to be people out there that say, I'm nuts. Well, I'm not. You know, I, I wished I'd I wished I'd have never found out about Bigfoot. I wished I could go back and live a normal life. The, the last thing in my life that I ever wanted was to find out that these things were living here, you know. And they've been here, I would say, a long time. I do know this, the people that owned this farm before, I just 15 acres before I owned it, they moved in, they left here, and uh, they had lived here many, many years, and they left and moved right in the middle of town down in Salina. 
they left here. And they that's how I got the land. I bought off them. And they moved into right in the middle of Salina, right in the middle of town. So I never give that much thought till later on. And, you know, you think about things, you know, as time goes on and why this and why that. But, yeah, they, 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 uh, they draw on the house and they, I don't know what's up with these X's and Y's. You know, those pictures I sent you, Jeremiah, with that coyote's head ripped off with a forked limb laying next to what used to be a head on a coyote. I found that out here. It was a coyote that had, had its head, well, actually, it had half of its head. What it done is this Bigfoot ripped its face off and it left a forked stick about two foot long laying right next to where its face used to be. And, you know, they, they obviously don't like coyotes. And um, we never hear many coyotes around here. I think they keep them cleaned out. But And I told you about that time that I walked out of my, off my front deck and uh, there's a deer laying out here three steps from my front door of my deck and it had its head ripped off. They left that, I believe, for a gift, you know. Uh, they've seen me kill and clean a lot of deer here on this place over the years. I quit hunting, oh, probably the last deer I shot was in 2018 with a muzzle loader. So I've not hunted since 2018. I just, at my age, I lost interest in it, you know. I don't care anything about killing anything anymore as long as I can, you know, buy my own food and stuff. But if I ever have to go back to do it, I won't have any problems if I had to. But these things, they, um, they observe everything you do. You know, they watch. They like watching people and what they're up to. And like I said, it is kind of a little freaky to, um, you know, to know they're right out here in the yard right now as I'm speaking to you. <laughs> but it, it is a little weird feeling, and you know, but, but they don't bother us. You know, they don't make any screams right around the house here unless you're outside now. You go outside, it's a different story, but, and I can't uh, get outside after dark on the phone. You know, I told you uh, last year that I was sitting out there. The first thing I heard was two trees crack and break and fall. And the next thing I noticed is one had grabbed a hole of my deck. And Jeremiah, when I built this deck back in um, 2008, I built it with uh, two baits with hurricane clips on each end of the two baits. You could drive a five-ton truck up on this deck, and it wouldn't bow. So I had one while I was out there on the phone that night about 830. I had one to grab the side. It's a colonial-style deck, and I had one to grab the side of the deck over here where there's a dark spot. One end of my deck, you can see light, and the other end, there's no light. That's the end they hang out on all the time. They won't hang out where there's any light. And anything they can hide behind, one can be 20 feet from you and you won't know it. But I had one to come up here about 8.30 one night last summer and grab my deck and shake it like it was a sack of potatoes. And it, it rattled, it shook this entire deck. And I went out there the next day and tried to shake it. And I couldn't even, I couldn't even, I couldn't even think about attempting to, to make the deck move in any form or fashion. And that's just the strength of these animals. They're, they've got superhuman strength. Well, you know, a gorilla, Jeremiah, has the strength of 20 men. And speaking of gorillas, I got that um, researching gorillas to see if I could find a connection between these Bigfoots and gorillas. And I will say this. Anybody can do the same thing I've done. There's four types of gorillas that live in Africa, and they do have a lot of traits of Bigfoot. They bow over trees. Uh, they use forked sticks as tools. They make a bed every night with uh, they break limbs off and uh, and uh, and bow them like in a ninety degree angle. And they will make a nest out of that every night to sleep in. They sleep, you know, in a different nest every night, pretty much. I guess that's what the that's what the program said that I got on. I, I'd like to say I did some investigating a little bit about, and, and I'm going to tell you something. Gorillas and Bigfoots have 99% of the same, um, the same tactics and the same behavior. Um, I do believe that they are very closely related. I don't exactly know what a Bigfoot is, but I do know that I have seen a lot of uh, uh, of the same patterns 
that gorillas do that Bigfoot do. You know, the thumping on the chest, for instance. You know, the big nose and, uh, you know, the hair on the face comes uh, about halfway across their face, you know, on each side. Now, some of these Bigfoots here have their... Um, uh, the, the, I've seen some smaller ones about waist high that has the face completely covered in hair. And some of them don't have any hair at all, so I don't know what you know what the difference in them is. I, they might be different species of Bigfoot, I think, because, like I said, I've seen another thing too, Jeremiah. Well, I've got a metal roof on my front deck. It's uh, 30 by 12, 30 foot long, 12 foot wide. I put a metal metal roof on it. And when these Bigfoot, when the lights are all off, um, and with just our bathroom light on it, you keep it dark in here of a night, you know, sometimes. And when they get close to the deck, their body image will reflect onto the top of the, my uh, deck uh, roofing. Their body image will will reflect, and you can see their body image up there. And when I take a picture, I can see them in the picture, and I can also see them on on this metal that they reflect off of in the light. And uh, yeah, some of them have hair around their necks, you know. Uh, like I said, they they all look a little different. Um, and the little ones, um, like I said, they they kind of look like chimps to me. I don't know. Some of them do and some of them don't, but they're all kind of different looking. But I do know this. These these Bigfoots, they they really uh they really uh, are good mothers because about every every time you see one, they've got a little one, you know, either by them or they're holding them in their hands or they're on their shoulders. We've even seen them on the top of their heads, you know, riding riding along with them. But um there's so much um, to tell. And something else, too, is once you start picking up on this uh, Bigfoot activity and you know what to look for, like the boat over trees and and snapped off trees, you know, about 10, 12 foot up in the air. I'm talking about trees that are six inches in diameter, four and six inches in diameter. Um, these creatures are, I, I've seen uh, evidence of them over here in the city limits of Cookville. It's a town about 25 miles away. Uh, I've seen evidence of them over there inside the city limits, a place you'd never think that these things would be, but I figured out wherever there's food, water, and cover, these creatures will be there. And, you know, they're opportunistic. They'll, they'll get food any way they can. Um, I don't think they eat meat a whole lot. I think they do kill and eat deers, no doubt. But I think, and I'm going to tell you why I think this, I think they eat um, sprouts, they eat leaves, especially green leaves. They love walnut leaves, you know that. I mean, you had, uh, I had showed you a lot of pictures last year where they'd strip off green walnut leaves, and they pack off walnuts, too. Um, but uh, they, I have seen, and I've been in the woods back in the winter, and I saw rotten trees, Jeremiah, that had a big bite mark out of them. And I'm talking a bite mark probably a foot long or something. It just, well, I know what it was, a Bigfoot done. It's, it's, it's uh, like a rotten tree that has soft pulp in it. I've seen where one of these Bigfoots had just took a big bite out of it, you know, while it's still standing and it laying on the ground. And I've seen activity of them around old rotted stumps and stuff like that where they're looking for, you know, beetles or whatever, you know, some kind of bugs to eat. But I think they eat more shrubs, leaves, especially in the summertime. I think they eat green grass. And it took me a while to figure that out because in the summertime, uh, down close to the woods where I don't mow, I got a four-acre front yard, by the way. And some I, I can't keep up a four acre yard at my age. Um, I've seen where uh, I can walk out in the back next to the wood line over next to my cow barn, and I can tell where they've been the, the night prior. And they make a big old place on the ground. You've seen the pictures I've sent you, Jeremiah, where they've sat on the ground, and there's always been a big spot in the front that was missing of grass. And that's how I figured out they eat green grass too. And uh, last winter, 
um, I think it was in Jan yeah, it was in January. I got up one morning. It's about eight o'clock. My girlfriend gets up real early sometimes, three or four. She'll get up, and smoke a cigarette, make her a cup of coffee. She said uh, back in mid January, she said she got up and walked in here, and she said there was a uh, a Bigfoot laying back here by her bedroom. It jumped up and run through the front yard down the driveway. And she showed me when I got up. I got me a cup of coffee and said, here a little while. And I said, well, there's the snow on the ground. There's about four inches of snow. On the I said, I'll go out there and drink my coffee and I'll take pictures and see if I can see. see excuse me, see if I can see where it ran off. And sure enough, I went out there and boy, right there the footprints was. I sent you a bunch of those. And also, I found out these things can leap from one. They can be like uh, they, uh, instead of being on all fours, they kind of sit, you know, they, they sit um, kind of hunched over a little. And they can jump from one spot to the next. I, I've uh, sent you some pictures where there's 10 and 12 foot leaps. I measured them from a one, they can leap 10 to 12 feet at a time, you know, and that's, that's moving for an animal that big, um, you know, to, to jump that far 10 to 12 foot uh, spaces in between, in between, that's like a rabbit. I mean, these things can jump like a rabbit, but I would just like to know what they are. You know, we have, we have, uh, like I said, they're out here right now in my front yard standing. And I'll tell you something else, Jeremiah. They love to eat burning bushes for whatever reason. I've not figured that out yet. But they, I've got uh, 12 burning bushes out here in my yard, and they've never been trimmed. And they're 25 years old, and they're like 12, 14, 16 foot high. And they love to, to eat those burning bushes. <laughs> and they'll, right after dark, um, there's a certain group of the big ones that stand in the same place every night, same place. And um, I've got some some big um, uh, spruce trees and some uh, Canadian fir trees in my front yard too. And they climb them basically every night. They'll get up in them. I can see their eye shine. We see eye shine, Jeremiah. I mean, I'm sitting here right now, and, and you know, just right out there. 40 yards they're out there right now uh, you know anytime i want to i can see i shine they know i won't harm them they're not uh, they're not they're not afraid of us but they know that you know i won't harm them that's why they bring their little ones around here all the time is they trust us and um anyway uh they hang out the i was saying a while ago there's a certain group uh there's like three great big ones that um, like to stand in the same place every night out there. There's a, uh, with my street light the way it is, uh, these uh, Canadian fir trees block off a certain uh, location down that row of burning bushes, and they stand in the dark right there in that blocked out place where there's no light. And you can look out there. You know, any time after dark, and you can see I shine in the same ones. I take pictures of them too, and uh, it's the same three that stand out there. It's a, it's a great big tall one, and one a little shorter, and then uh, a young one. Sometimes we'll stand out there with them, but um, yeah, it's like I said, it's a never night thing here. Um, we kind of never got used to being around them. I don't think we ever will, but we've learned to live with them. You know, it's just, uh, it's just how it is. It is, it is what it is, Jeremiah. Uh, there's so much more to tell. Like I said, there's another place down here on the river and, you know, about anywhere you go around here, I was mushroom hunting today and, you know, sign everywhere in the woods, mowed over trees. Um, the trees that's bowed over behind my house, they point at my house. I don't know what kind of sign that is, but they're about six inch trees bowed over. No limbs whatsoever on them. They're stripped clean of limbs. And they bow them over and point them toward my house, if that means anything. I don't really know. There's so much I don't know about these things. 
And I've only been on to them for about a year and a half, not hardly a year and a half. But when you have experiences, you know, all the time and they're right here every night, you know, you, you know, there's, there's a lot to say about them, you know, but they are peaceful. You know, they've not, uh, they scared us there for quite a while though. We were terrified. We were literally living in fear every single night. Um, there for, for, you know, a long time, about eight months, I guess. We were living in fear of them. You know, they, like I said, when they want us to go to bed, they started hitting the house with uh, acorns and stuff. And then one night they got to throwing pretty good sized rocks on their roof, you know, hitting the side of the house with it. I've got, uh, uh, speaking of uh, Jeremiah, there's something else I want to talk to you about too. Um, there's a trout hatchery. It's about 15 and off from here. And they have a, a a hard time keeping these Bigfoots out of that trout hatchery. Um, there's a group of them. I've heard pretty good sized group of them live there. I've seen sign everywhere. I've seen their footprints. I've seen boat over to you know you name it. But I haven't. Uh, I've seen one quite a few actually at a distance last summer. But you know maybe 150 yards away, standing at the edge of the wood line. But at night down there, they won't let anybody uh, walk in that little. They got a little park down there, a little walking park. It's about a mile and a half, maybe all the way around. They won't, the park ranger won't let anybody walk in it after dark. Uh, last summer, they was, uh, it's a big RV park too. You know, they, it's part of Del Hollow Dam, Del Hollow Reservoir. And uh, there's a big RV place down there. And last summer, they had quite a bit of trouble, a lot of people running for their lives and saying that there was bears running around, you know. At least that's what they were told by the by the wardens, by the park rangers. You know, they was running back and telling them they seen this. Oh, that's just some bears that's been running around trying to get into the track factory. Well, the sign that I've seen, and like I said, I've seen some real big clips down there from a the distance. They're not bears, but the park rangers and game wardens want to tell you that they're bears, but they're not bears. My neighbor down here, as a matter of fact, um, I've got so much to tell. It's crazy. My neighbor down here, her her husband passed away, and I was good friends with them, still am. They're from Florida. Lived down here about a mile from me. And after her husband passed away back in uh, uh, April of last year, and I was talking to her down there maybe a couple, two or three months ago. I seen her outside, and I hadn't talked to her in a while. Like I said, she's a friend of mine. I stopped and talked to her, and I said, do you ever hear anything weird around here at night, or do you ever hear any, any trees breaking or snapping or any weird sounds? She goes, yeah. It's funny you said that, Mark. She said, just the other night, I heard my dog started barking. She said, I grabbed the flashlight. And she said, I go around back. Like I said, she just lives a mile from me. She said, I went around back, and she said, all of a sudden, a big black bear stands up and it was almost in my face. And she said, I dropped my flashlight and I ran as fast as I could back in the house. And of course, I didn't want to scare Jeremiah. I didn't say anything about what I knew, but I knew it wasn't no uh, black bear. We don't have black bears here. We got black bears about 40 miles from here, but I've lived here, like I said, 28 years. I've never seen a black bear here. You have to go to Crossville about 40 miles away and there's quite a few black bears up in the Smoky Mountains and up around Crossville. But remember, do you, Jeremiah, do you remember last summer, I told you I had a game warden that was a lifelong friend of mine. We were raised up in the mountains up in East Overton County, and he was raised up in the same neighborhood that I was, and I knew his father real well and used to work for him. He used to be an independent truck driver. Yeah. And, and he moved people from one city to another. And I used to go with him sometimes on trips and help him load up the furniture and stuff. So um, he was just a little boy then, maybe seven or eight years old. Well, he grew up and and um, went to college and got him a um, biology degree and degree in biology. He's a game warden. Well, I was sitting here talking with my girlfriend last summer, and I said, you know what? I've got a lifelong friend of mine I hadn't seen in a long time. I said, he's a game warden. I'm going to call him up. So I get the phone book out and call him up. We have a, you know, a big, 
a big a big talk and he goes yeah I'll, he, I told him where I live he goes, yeah I'll come down so I go up to uh, first I go up and meet him um, I didn't really I didn't tell him anything about Bigfoot I wanted to talk to him face to face I went up and met him at uh, uh, Arby's parking lot uh, last summer I sat in his truck for maybe an hour and told him what I knew and uh, so he said I'll come down and uh, you know uh next weekend so but something came up and they had to go uh do something a bunch of those game wardens had to go somewhere and stay three days on the lake bell hall so he called me up and said i can't be there i said i'll be there another day so sure enough he come at the time he said he would and he stayed here for over two hours jeremiah looking at evidence a tennessee state game warden i won't mention his name but he stayed here for over two hours, and I showed him that cow, supposedly cow hip bone, which I think it's a Bigfoot hip bone. Um, like I told you last summer, Jeremiah, there ain't no cows within a five-mile radius of my house. So why would it be a cow hip bone? Anyway, I showed him that X and the Y scratched on it and, um, and took him uh, behind the house. And we stayed around here walking around for about two hours, you know, talking. I showed him some things that had happened to my barn, you know. And the first thing we talked about when we stepped in the woods behind my house, he walked up to this green bush and said, do you know what that is? And I said, no, I don't. Uh, I have no idea. And he goes, that's a spice bush. And see, at the time he was telling me this, it went right over my head because I didn't put the two and two together until he'd done left. He said, that's a spice. And went into telling me about this spice bush. And he said, certain creatures eat this spice bush. Uh, it cleans their teeth and it makes them smell good. And I thought, well, why would a creature care about their teeth and care about smelling good? You know what? what he told me all about it, but it never computed. It just went right over my head. Well, we got him in the house, and um, we got to talking about old times. He had his gun and everything on. We got to talking about old times and stuff, showing him all these pictures. Like I said, he stayed here a little over two hours. And my girlfriend just came out and asked him, you know, she's kind of a blunt, straightforward person. And she says, I want to ask you something. She said, does Bigfoot really exist? And he wouldn't answer the question. Um, he would just shake his head. and. Um, he, and he told my girlfriend, he says, um, you can sit out there on your porch all night long on your phone and you won't be harmed by anything I know of. He said, you won't be harmed by, he said, I don't know of anything around here that will harm you. And so, you know, when, and then she asked him a few other questions and he would just nod his head up and down. He'd either nod yes or he'd nod no, but he wouldn't say nothing out. You know, he wouldn't say nothing, you know, that was definite. I'm sure these game wardens sign a disclosure where they're not allowed to talk about them. But they know all about them, Jeremiah. You can count on that. And I walked him out. Oh, I walked him across the street and showed him some snapped off trees that just happened a couple of nights before he came down here. And he's seen all the bowed over stuff and all the forked limbs hanging all around here about head high. And I showed him some places where something big had set and i told him what i thought it was and he'd just shake his head every time i'd show him one he'd really pay attention now now uh i can't say his name but he was really i mean he was really on top of his game but he just wouldn't come out and say that bigfoot exists i couldn't get him to admit to it but um he, he was really you know really nice and i treated him like he is you know my brother and he treated me like a, like i was his brother we talked about everything and he was very courteous very nice just like the young man i used to know you know like i said he just raised up down the street from me and and uh, i'm about 10 years older than he is but uh, yeah i knew his family he knew my family i used to work some for his dad back in the day but he wouldn't uh no nah, he, he wouldn't come out and say you know what he knew they were. He, oh, of course, he knew what was going on. He looked at them boat over trees and just shake his head. Told me all about the spice bush. Told me they wouldn't hurt me. 
but he wouldn't tell me what they were, you know. <laughs> yeah. I knew I'd probably get him in trouble. He, yeah. w- he was Go trying ahead. to tell you without telling you is what it sounds like to me. That's exactly right, Jeremiah. Uh, mm. But like I said, that spice bush thing went right over my head. I, I didn't have any idea, um, you know, what he was talking about. You know, what I thought, what animal will care about keeping clean teeth and what animal will care about smelling good? And what it is, I forgot to mention this, this spice bush is peppermint. It's a peppermint bush. If you eat it, it tastes like peppermint. It's real peppermint. And they grow about, oh, waist to chest high to a six-foot-tall man. And they're everywhere behind my house. That was the first thing he noticed when he stepped in the woods. He walked straight up to one. First thing he done. He said, you know what that is? And I said, no, I don't. He said, that, that's a spice bush. He said, they're peppermint. He said, uh, break one of the leaves off and chew it up in your mouth. I did. I said, yeah, that's spearmint, peppermint. He goes, exactly. He said, some animals like to keep their teeth clean, and some animals like to lay in them and, and uh, you know, like to put them on their body. It makes them smell good. Now, that just went right over the top of my head during my but anyway, he left, and I haven't contacted him since. He told me, if you know, anything, uh, like I said, he's one of my best friends, used to be back in the day, and still is, if I ever needed him. Uh, he's not your typical, you know, smart aleck, you know, better than thou, you know, blowed up ego. He ain't that type of a guy. But, um, uh, you know, he, I, like I said, I was just talking to him like he is my brother. And... <laughs> He would just shake his head when he didn't want to answer something. And when he when he seen something he didn't want to talk about, there again, he'd just shake his head. I showed him all them pork limbs, and that blew him away. He he got a couple down out of the trees out here. And uh, I've got a big ash tree out here, and he got a couple down out of that ash tree and looked at them. And, you know, he said, I wonder what that is. I wonder why that is. I said, that ain't normal. He said, no. He said, that's not normal to me. I said, well, it sure ain't to me. And he put them back up there. And, and uh, we went, we walked on, you know. And, uh, but yeah, it's an every night thing. There's so much. I can, my, my girlfriend went in there to read a book. And I don't have her here for, you know, to fill me in on all the stuff that she knows too. But it's just an every night thing, Jeremiah. And, um, but that night she went out there and that and jumped up beside the car and jumped our smoker grill. And she said that she, she, you know what she said? There's something else I want to talk to, talk to you about. Believe it or not, these Bigfoots are as much scared of us as we are of them. Uh-huh. They're terrified. They're terrified of humans. I mean, they don't like to be around humans. Uh, they growl. And trust me, from what I know about them, um, I don't know if I could say they don't like us, but they sure don't like being around us. They like watching us from a distance, especially, you know, after dark. If they can look in your window, they love walking around looking in people's windows. But here they don't have to do that. They can just watch me on my phone when I'm up here in this window every night. They, you know, back off at a distance and watch everything I do. We don't try to hide from them no more. We were terrified for a long time and kept all the windows shut and the lights all out and Finally, we just got to the point where, well, we know they ain't going to do anything to us. They'd have done it by now, you know. Well, yeah. um, I mean, you definitely think so, especially since um, you mentioned that there was a, you know, the coyote with its uh, mm -hmm. head ripped off and the deer with its face ripped off. How, remind me, how recent did did those two instances happen? Uh, The coyote was uh, not this past winter. But the last winter, Mm -hmm. it was like uh, early spring of last year. It was like March of last year, about a year ago when I found that. Yeah, about a year ago. It was in March, I believe, Jeremiah. And, um, yeah, she told me that uh, she scared that Bigfoot to death when she turned that light off in the car to get out. She said Mm. it wouldn't move as long as she had the light on. But as as soon as she went to turn that light off... And and that thing, before she could even get out of the car, it jumped up and jumped right in front of her face. She said it was about my height, about six foot tall, she thought. And she said it jumped that cooler, I mean, jumped that cooler out there like it wasn't even there. Or not that cooler, but the, the smoker out in the front yard. 
but there's so many things that's happened i can't remember them all uh i will say this how uh i know there's one here that's at least 12 foot tall i, I actually think there's about three of them that heights mm. uh, i don't know exactly the heights but i know they're extremely tall and one of them and you know about this we talked about it last year we uh went and bought us a new fan last uh may i think it was went and bought us a new fan to put in the bedroom and it had been quiet we had a little fan back there prior to that the first night we put that fan up that big fan i went outside the next day and walked around the back of the house and i saw a handprint Oh, that's something else I want to talk to you about, too. I saw a handprint, Jeremiah, on the back of the house, and I came uh, around here, and I texted you and told you, and you said, go measure it, and I went and measured it, and it was seven inches from outside the little finger to the outside thumb. It was seven inches, and speaking of handprints, I got a good one to tell you about that. And this this is going to trip your trigger right here, partner. We went. We we go down to the trout hatchery all the time and walk on that little walk place down there, about a mile and a half. It's a it's a paved uh, little trail down there. Well, we was down there uh, last fall. No, it was last summer, last July, I think it was. And uh, my girlfriend has really good hearing, but I can't hear it thunder. I cannot hear it thunder shooting too much. I guess back in the day on the tanks. But anyway. She said, Mark, I hear something running up this creek. There's a creek that runs down through the middle of this trail. And at the end of the little creek, there's trout in there, too, full of trout, rainbows and browns, and right up on the hills to hatchery. She goes, Mark, I hear something. They wouldn't know by down there but us. And that's a lot of cases, just us. She said, I hear something running up that creek, and it's really moving fast. And I said, I can't hear it. She goes, well, let's, let's, uh, let's jog a little. Let's start walking fast. And she goes, I can still hear it. It's still coming. And so we basically take off and start running. And, at, you know, it just kind of caught us off guard. We didn't have time enough to think about what it was. She just heard something big running up the middle of that creek. And this creek, you can't see unless you're right on the edge of it. It's a, it's a, a, uh, creek it's uh, sunk down low and so we get up there next to the car and we stop by this big poplar tree there's a poplar tree there probably 100 years old it's huge probably five foot thick and we stopped there and rest a few minutes and we got our breath and so we went ahead and got in the car well the very next day we come back and we're walking down through there and I happened to look over, you know, that poplar tree's right there. You, you have to walk right by it. I, I looked over there, and I saw a huge handprint on the side of this poplar tree, and it was muddy. It was muddy. So I took pictures of it. I send them to you. You've got them, so you know all about it. But what that Bigfoot done, there's a, Jeremiah, there's a, there's a, like a concrete, um, uh, underground, uh, there, there's a, um, uh, it's not a pipe, it's a, it's a concrete, um, um, spillway thing that runs under the road down there, and you can go, and there's a creek that runs through the middle of it, and it's really cool and dark back in there. It's a way to go under the road, uh, for the Corps of Engineers, they go under the road right there if they ever have to, they don't never, but in case they have to, for some reason or another. And it's dark back there, and then big, there's just a bunch of Bigfoots I know live back in there because we see all kinds of sign of it. There's rocks laying everywhere in different places every time we walk by it on the trail. There's big rocks down there, 50, 75-pound rocks that are moved. Sometimes there's none there laying there at all. And I looked at my girlfriend, and I said, there ain't no human being can move one of those rocks, and let alone no human being would have any business packing a rock down there. Well, what had happened was, uh, it's right there next to where this Bigfoot saw us, and we were the only ones there, and it saw us running, and it came up there to let us know, you know, I'm here. So that's all about the handprint thing. That Bigfoot wanted us to know that, hey, this is my this is my territory. And he wanted us to see that handprint, Jeremiah. He ran right up there as soon as we took off and slapped his left hand up there on that big poplar tree and left the prettiest big handprint. You've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. For all the listeners out there, Jeremiah knows what I'm talking about. Slap that big left handprint up there, and it's huge. And uh, nothing else can leave a handprint that size, and it looked like that. Oh, and by the way, six fingers. 
Yeah, I forgot to mention that part. Um, six fingers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Right, six we, fingers. We both know what that means. Well, I, I mean, I know, it's, I know a Bigfoot left it. I don't know what else it means. Well, I know it's six fingers. True. And that's not the only one I've got pictures of. There's one here at the house that's got six fingers. Really? And I got pictures of him. Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Go back, Jeremiah. I know it's been a year, and I know you've talked to a lot of people. Yeah. Go back to the pictures I sent you in the beginning last year and look at that six-fingered Bigfoot uh -huh. print. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you've sent, and you I've have sent me a ton of pictures uh, over the last year for sure. There's been a, a massive amount. Um, go back go back, and look at that six-fingered Bigfoot handprint. Uh -huh. I mean, you couldn't. You couldn't put a prettier, muddy handprint on a big poplar tree, no prettier than that one was. Right. I mean, there's no denying it. There's no denying it. You can't look at that and say, well, something else doesn't get. Impossible. It's, Not it's, impossible. It's pretty wild, it's for sure. Um, yeah. Go back and look at that. Okay. Then I've got one here on the back of the house that's, that's also got six fingers. Now, uh, I've told you about the trout stream with the, the Bigfoot running up there. Now, that's the only reason I can think that he would run up there and put his muddy handprint on the tree that we stopped by to take a rest. That the only reason I can think that he did that is to tell us this is his territory and to let us know that he's there, you know, and to kind of be cautious. I can't I can't think of nothing else why a Bigfoot would run up a creek like that. And he was down there fishing is what he was doing. And I've got uh, three pictures of some Bigfoots uh, down there on that same creek later on that we took. We were on a bridge, and I looked up there, and I saw three, and they're gray looking. But, um, yeah, you can tell the high bridge route, the high brow ridge, the, the big eyes. Um, but I only got that one picture. But, yeah, that, that he was one of those Bigfoots I think I took a picture of about maybe two or three weeks later. But, Jeremiah, I can't think of no other reason he would run up there and do that other than to tell us that that's his territory and to let us know he was there. Absolutely. But that's, the prettiest, that's the prettiest handprint of a Bigfoot that I've ever saw. It is. In our first time talking um, – yeah, I'll, I'll just say actually real quick, I, I do, there's going to be some stuff that had happened in the last year and man, you are still having some wild things, uh, happening, Mark. It, it's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it just, it blows me they're, away. They're, they're, they're standing out here right now in my front yard where I can't see them. They're seeing me right now as I'm telling you this, as we're talking on the phone right now, they can see me. Hmm. And I know, I know, and I know where they are, but I, I can't see them with the naked eye. But um, you know, go out there with a flashlight, and out there, bam! Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Back, uh, it, we had a warm night back in the winter. I can't remember exactly when it was. Maybe December. Me and my girlfriend went out. They was having meteor showers, Jeremiah. And um, I wanted to go out, and like I said, we don't go out here after dark. Nobody does in my neighborhood. And we, I said, well, I'm going to go out. I don't care. You know, I don't care. They run us back in, whatever. I'm going out here and see these meteor showers. And I talked her into coming out there, too. But um, we were out there maybe maybe 10 minutes. And I had a small Bigfoot run within 10 yards of me. I mean, I could see its body and everything. It was in the dark now. It never did show itself in the light. But I heard it running from the burning bushes coming down the other side. I was on one side of the burning bushes, and it was on the other. And my girlfriend's got great hearing, and she goes, here one comes, Mark. Get back in the house. I'm telling you right now, get back in the house. And uh, my dog was out there, and it never barked or nothing. Uh, my black loud. And... Sure enough, it come down one side of the burning bushes, crossed the burning bushes, and ran within 30 feet of me, and it stopped. And she said, I told you for the last time to get your butt in the house, and I mean now. And she she talked me into it pretty quick when that thing stopped. It kind of gave me the willies. But yeah, it was a small one, maybe about waist high. I could see the outline of it. Mm -hmm. 
the off the street light. So wow. it's stuff like that in Jeremiah that happens. Well, if we wanted to see one, all we have to do is just go out there right now. I could hang up the phone. I tell you what, I could keep you on the phone to go out there and while I'm talking to you right now. Mm. And if I wanted to see one, I could see one. Wow. And look, this group of, yeah, yeah, man. This group around the house here, like I said, they're used to us. They're really used to me because I've lived here 28 years. And these things were around here when I first moved here, but I didn't know it. And uh, it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. It's every night. They don't come out in the daylight very much. Now, my girlfriend did see that big one in the backyard last summer, wrecking out Scrouse, but that's the only one. Um, now, I've got pictures of some in the daylight. Um, but uh, you know, to me, Jeremiah, I've got one picture. I've never, I've never seen it to you, and I've never talked to you about it. But I've got one picture that they kind of look like ne- what a Neanderthal would look like in a book. Mm. It's a big one. I think it's a male and a female, and the one's got reddish kind of hair. And uh, oh yeah, uh, a couple more things, right quick. Uh, their skin is kind of bluish. Either their hair or their skin is kind of bluish color because when I take a picture of one of a night, there's a lot of blue around them. You know, I don't know if it's in their hair follicles. Um, I know their skin is is kind of grayish black looking, um, but there's something to do with blue there somewhere. There's something either they've got maybe blue hair follicles or something to do with a blue color because there's just something too blue in a Bigfoot. I don't know. I can't explain it, Jeremiah. Mm. You think that you want to say? No. Uh, but, yeah, I was telling Jeremiah, that we, if we wanted to see a Bigfoot, I would have to do some walk out there in the yard right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people on here, you know, people that, that, that don't know our situation, uh, they think it's crazy, but no, it's not crazy. I mean, we've been putting up with it for a long time, and we finally found out they don't mean us any harm. Right. They are what they are, Jeremiah. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, yeah, one more thing, too, I was going to tell you. We was going to move. We've been waiting on something. We've been fighting something for four years. Well, we found out Monday that after everything, doctors, you name it, after everything was in someone's favor um we was uh, a person was found unfavorable they weren't uh, uh denied because of what was wrong they were just basically said that they didn't like just the word unfavorable and that's why you know that kind of shot us down this week we've been my girlfriend had been fighting for four years on something and found out monday that that ain't going to come through so you know, she barely can walk due to a car wreck and her feet's all screwed up and she's got metal and hardware in both feet and both ankles and some other situ- you know, problems going on. And we found out that they don't care. It was just a four-year battle for nothing. So I guess we're going to be here until the good Lord, uh, you know, sees fit that we can move. So that really took the eye out of mm. us. But, hey, you know, we got we got our health. There you know, you go. our farms yep. paid for our farms paid for. We got mm-hmm. our health. We don't go hungry. Um, and I'm going to go back to work next week. I found me a job. So, you know, we don't need for nothing, Jeremiah, but we were just wanting to move. That was our big thing. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, Jeremiah, there's big foods all around this area I live in. I mean, there, these things are everywhere around here. Well, you know, I was going to ask, things- I was going to ask you, um, it come up in the first episode that we did together that, you're kind of close to Standing Stone State Park. Um, yeah. Have you ever talked to anyone at that park about Bigfoot, or are there sightings that happen in that state park? Uh, no, not in person. I talked to one guy online after uh, I was on your show the first time, uh-huh. and he said that, um, that that he had, you know, had run into some something about Standing Stone State Park that he knew that they were over there. He'd seen either them or the sign of them one to other. I don't really remember which, but yeah, it's standing stone. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, it's a creeped out place anyway. And it's about four miles from me. And, uh, like I said, Jeremiah, there's, there's Bigfoot all over this area. Our place ain't the only one. Uh, let me tell you what my neighbor told me about 10 years ago. 
I was accused of being a peeping Tom. My neighbor moved here from from Oklahoma. They were truck drivers. They still live about a mile, mile and a half from me. And uh, she was telling some other neighbors around here that, yeah, uh, I think uh, Mark was looking in my window the other night, and uh, he had on a, a black hoodie had a black leather jacket and was wearing black pants. He had everything on he had was black. And uh, and this person said, no, Mark Paul would never do nothing like that. No, 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 you're mistaking him. You, you're thinking uh, that somebody else was doing it. It wasn't him. Everybody knows me, you know, and uh, don't have a criminal record, never been in jail. But uh, she had told some neighbors that she saw something looking in the window at her and it was wearing, uh, he had a black face, it was wearing a black hoodie, and had black pants on. He thought it was some man looking in the window. Well, you know, after uh, about a year and a half ago, after I'd done some, I never gave it any thought. I just said, no, you're you're out of your mind. Um, I got to thinking about that, and that, that was a Bigfoot looking in her window by what she described it, you know. Black face, black hoodie, she gave all the right descriptions of it, you know. But uh, yeah, we're everywhere around here. My neighbor across the street, I told you last year, she shot, shot up an arrow where I wanted to run it off. Um, Jeremiah, when I take pictures of these Bigfoots around here, sometimes I take pictures of them in the front yard. I can see them in her yard too on my camera. You know, when I take a picture of some in my yard, I automatically capture some in her yard too, I'm not even trying. Yeah, she sleeps with a loaded gun every night, and she's had her animals hurt by them. Oh, I forgot to tell you this. Our cat, one uh, hurt my cat, uh, our cat about a month ago, pulled its uh, pulled its hind leg out of socket. Really? That killed our com. Yeah, our com cat. Our com cat had its hind leg pulled out of socket, and he just barely is getting around right now. We've had our animals hurt, but like I said, they could kill them anytime they want to, but they won't. You know, they do like us. Uh, if they didn't, then they, they would cause a lot more problems than what they do, Jeremiah. So, what's that? Yeah, my girlfriend said she's come to love them. <laughs> good, good. Oh, yeah. She sing, like I said, she sings to them. They, uh, they, they, oh, Jeremiah, one more thing. We heard them uh, last, last summer, uh, another neighbor up the other end of the road, about two miles from me, uh, his son, his teenage son, went and bought a new scooter. Now, this is a wild story. And he'd been riding it down through here for maybe two or three days. And, you know, they, you know, you know what a scooter sounds like. Well, one evening, my girlfriend was, and my girlfriend, she don't, uh, after a Bigfoot started growling at her, uh, she's quit uh, having any kind of, you know, trying to communicate with them. But she got into trying to communicate with them there for a while, and they would, you know, make all kinds of sounds at her and stuff and thump their chest and and this and that and other. And uh, uh, we had just went out there. This was the same day that that polluted woodpecker, this was the same day, same instance this polluted woodpecker flew up, and I told you that Bigfoot drawed a picture of it on my house. Well, this boy who had just bought this scooter came down in front of the house on it, and I, I don't like I said he only had it two or three days. Well, as soon as he got out of sight on it, we heard another scooter fire up behind the house, and this Bigfoot sounded just like that scooter. These things can imitate anything: sirens, scooters. I've heard them hoot like owls. I've heard them bark like a dog with a whoop on the end of it. They go woo woo. They bark like a dog and put a whoop on the end of it, Jeremy. Yeah, I've heard them do that. So they can Im imitate about anything. And I thought that was wild. Uh, oh, yeah, last summer, I was over in my orchard, and I was over there about dusky dark putting food out for them in the bag. And uh, I heard a push mower, what I thought was a push mower, fire up behind the house down in the hall there. And at the time, I didn't think it was a, was a Bigfoot. Because this is when I first started to find out how good they are at imitating things. So I come in here and I asked my girlfriend, I said, our neighbors that live over on our property line, I said, did they, they buy a new mower? My girlfriend said, no, not that I know of. I hadn't heard it. And that's when it hit me. This Bigfoot, uh, as I was walking back to the house, fired up, 
and sounded just like a push mower being pushed through grass. I mean, identical. Identical. If you was watching a, a commercial about a push mower being mowing grass, it would sound just like that. And that's when I realized these things can mimic anything. Like I said, I don't know what they are. I think I think they are very close relatives to the gorilla. They could be uh, Jeremiah. They could be uh, an unknown. Of course, the government knows and the military knows, but to our civilians, they could be an unknown uh, species of wood ape. I mean, they could be. I don't really know. I don't want people to beat me up over, you know, me saying that because I, I don't really know what they are, but I think they could be. The only thing, though, that gets me is the height. Where does that height come from? You know, the Nephilim, maybe, I don't know. But well, they, I mean, they, they, you know. You said, you, you, you did say six fingers, so, right? I've got two, oh, I've got two pictures of that and so have you. Mm-hmm. Well, Jeremiah, what I want you to do is when you when we quit talking here and we hang up, I want you to go back uh, to those pictures I very first started sending you last year. And I sent you that real clear picture. I mean, I'm standing right by it. I took like six or eight pictures of it. And I mean, um, you know what I mean? Uh, it, you look at that and what else can you say it is? You know, a handprint that big. Right. And you can see that. You can actually see the hair coming off his hand into the print on each side of his hand. Like on his wrist, you can even see the wrist hair down at the bottom. And, uh, yeah, six fingers, yeah. And like I said, I don't think all of them have six fingers. I think some of them do. Oh, here's something else, too. You remember those pictures I sent you of that big foot uh, in the snow? I took pictures of one that had three toes. So, you know, there's a lot about these things we don't know, you know, six fingers, three toes. Why would one have three toes? Right. Remember that? I said, go back and look. I sent you some pictures yeah. a while back, back in the winter. Um, and it was a huge print, but it only had three toes. It reminded me of that print. It looks exactly like that print uh, of that Yeti that what's his name took, that British guy took in the mm -hmm. Himalayas. Yep. The one where he let his little pickaxe down next to. It looks identical to that. Mark, but, uh, have you tried to get any uh, any video recordings or audio recordings yeah. over the last year? Uh, I've got one audio of one. Uh, uh, I've got 35 videos. Really? I've got. Uh -huh. And that's another thing I can tell, too, is uh, about the... Um, I had to put me in a deal, Jeremiah. About the when I video them, there's a yeah. I had to put me in some stuff. Hey, when you, I video you do, them, Jeremiah. You do you, yep. Yeah, when I put in when I video them, there's a blue. Uh, there's something to do with blue when I videotape them, mm. like a blue background. Um, I've actually seen, I've got one video where I'm videoing one standing next to a big hickory tree, and the hickory tree next to it is blue. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but in a lot of videos, uh, the things that they stand next to or where they're hunkered down, the ground will be blue, or the trees will be blue. So I don't know if that's uh, maybe some kind of a pigment in their hair or their skin. I don't know. But yeah, I've got 35 videos. Uh, well, I had over 750 photos, but I've yeah. never put, I don't know, I, Jeremiah, I don't know how to put any of this stuff online. People are going to say, why don't you share all that? Well, I don't know how to. I don't know. I know, uh, I know a lot about a smartphone, but I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to email very well. Right. I've never, I've never needed to, you know what I mean? And, um, you know the the pictures. I when you when you see these things every night, it ain't no big deal anymore to us. No, I I, I get it. I mean, I can't imagine being in that situation. It's like, you know, oh, big deal. Yeah. They're and there again. You said you have audio recordings. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got one good audio recording. It's one uh, that's going like, hmm? what? Really? He's like, uh, well, yeah. I'm gonna tell you what made him do it. It was coming a real bad storm here. Um, last winter, real lot of lightning and stuff, and I had my phone uh, audio and, and video, and I was doing a video when I had the audio on, and I had it up in the window, 
Uh-huh. And a Bigfoot, and a Bigfoot, it was pitch black dark. And a Bigfoot walked up to the, you remember this? A Bigfoot, uh, Sonia, a Bigfoot walked straight up to the deck, and he didn't know what this phone was in the window, I don't believe, because he went, and uh, that's the only audio, you know, that I have of one. Uh-huh. Now, I'd have gave anything when we were burning those leaves out there about two weeks ago. I'd have, I'd have give anything. As a matter of fact, to have got that um, Bigfoot uh, of sounding like a siren. He went from sounding like a, a real, real loud siren. And Jeremiah, this thing screamed for 30 seconds. Wow. At least, at least 30 seconds. That's a long time for something to scream. Can you imagine a set of lungs on these things? Yeah. It went from a loud, it went from a loud fire truck into a screech a loud screaming screech like something like somebody being tore apart but he started off with a loud siren like and then it went into a screech after that but i'd give anything if i'd had the the audio and i told my girlfriend i said you know what next time we burn leaves i'm gonna bring the phone out here we never thought nothing about the that's phone. a good we idea yep leaves. yep and I told her, I said, Sonia, I'm going to bring my phone out here next time we burn leaves or next time we decide to come out after dark, and I'll guarantee you I'll get something on it. But um, uh, Jeremiah, uh, oh, yeah, one last thing, Jeremiah. Anybody, like I said, Jeremiah knows my phone number, and if anybody wants to come to my house and see a Bigfoot, you're more than welcome. I welcome anybody who wants to come and tell me that I'm full of it. You're more than welcome to come. Uh, and spend a few hours with me after dark. And so, and then we'll see who's uh, on up and up. Abs- absolutely. Jeremiah, th- th- thank you for having me on the show, Jeremiah. It's yes, been sir. a pleasure and an honor. And is there anything else you want to know? Um, well, uh, I'm maybe I might have a few more questions. Um, is, when you hear the wood knocks, is there a pattern to them at all? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a pattern to all of them. Uh, they normally, well, um, I'd never heard a wood knock until 2010. Uh-huh. That's when I heard my first wood knock here. And at that time, I thought somebody was behind the house, you know. This was back in 2010. I thought somebody was behind the house cutting a tree down. And it was real loud. I think it knocked like six times. Yeah. And I went another 10 years and didn't even know what it was. But yeah, there's a pattern to them. And like I said, Sonia went down the woods with me the uh, day before yesterday hunting mushrooms. And as soon as she said, I love you guys, as soon as that come out of her mouth, bam, bam, six times. Bam, 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 bam. The last one is always the loudest. Yeah. The last <laughs> yeah, but the last one is always the loudest. And I heard one, I had one that would knock at me uh, early this morning. Uh, I was hunting mushrooms early. Now, when me and her went back out this evening together, we didn't hear no wood knocks. But here lately, I've been hearing them every time I get in the woods, and there is a pattern to them. And they're about maybe, I would say, 100 yards away. Maybe about 100, yeah. Way down in the, the hollow behind our house. Um, Have there ever been yeah, any my, um, missing people cases around your area over the years? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's been quite a few, as a matter of fact, really? north of here on the Kentucky, Tennessee uh, border in Clay County. You can look it up. Because yeah. I have. Right. There's uh, uh, about four people that went missing in the same area of northern Clay County, uh, Kentucky border. Mm-hmm. It's in northern Clay County, right there at the border. Over the last uh, few years, and like I said, I looked it up. That's how I found out. Yeah. Well, there was a guy down. You remember? I don't know. I think we might have discussed this last year. There was a guy. I think I might have discussed it with you in a text. There was a guy down here last year on Dale Hollow Lake that drowned in a canoe, or not a canoe, but a kayak. Okay. And he yeah. was with some guys. Yeah, he was with some guys. And you can look this up, too. And you know they hushed that up? They would not never give a reason for his death, Jeremiah. Hmm. Yes. Let me tell you, you got a few minutes, I'll tell you about it. He was with these guys. They were like four of them camping out. And uh, he gets up and decides to go along his kayak to the boat dock. Uh, and so he uh, he's going for a beer run is what I heard. 
And so he gets uh, close to an island down there, uh, Pine Island. It's right up from the reservoir. He gets up to Pine Island, and he beaches his kayak at Pine Island, and people people saw him. That's how they know he beached his kayak there. People saw him in fishing, in fishing boats, and he was never seen since. Okay, here's what's weird about it. He, yeah, he's never seen since until uh, at uh, about 6 o'clock the next evening. Uh, when the game wardens and everybody was called out down there to search for him, they shut down operations at dark. Now, why would they do that? That's one thing is fishy. They uh, and they but they basically made that uh, statement. You can look it up. They basically made that statement uh, open. They didn't try to hide the the fact. And they said that they shut down operations at dark because of um, the wildlife. That's what, that's what they said. They shut down operations on the first night hunting for him at dark because of due to wildlife. Okay. They they went back the next morning and, and hunted for him all day with sonar. Game wardens found him floating, I think, in 10 feet of water. And they have never, uh, they've never given an autopsy, and you can't find out anything about uh, any bodily injury or anything. They just basically... Put a lid on it. That's why. That's just right up. From, that's just right up from the trout hatchery, Jeremiah. Oh wow! That that's a fact. Yeah, look that up. He he was he killed he was killed last last summer on Bell Hollow Lake in Clay County, Tennessee, it's a line of Tennessee. And they said they shut down operations at dark due to wildlife. You know, when I first read that, I go, due to wildlife. What kind of wildlife would make them shut down? And then it hit me. Then it hit me. I know what made him shut down at dark. And uh, like I said, the next morning they went out again at daylight. They said as soon as it got light, the uh, the search party went went into action again, and that's the last you hear of it. They won't. You can't. They put a lid on it. They wouldn't. They nobody ever found out what happened to him. Wow. Yeah, but you can't again. The, no autopsy. They claim I know they've done an autopsy, but they would never release it. Right. Mm-mm. Nope. Mark, wouldn't give out no more details. I've mm-hmm. got two more questions for you. I I really appreciate your time tonight. I mean, okay. I, f- I feel like we could talk forever, but I got two more questions. Oh, for we you. could. We could, <laughs> Jeremiah. You know, uh, uh, hold on to those questions right quick. I want to ask you something before yes, I sir. get it. I noticed in a post the other day on, on the YouTube, you said that uh, if you get a certain amount of uh, subscribers, that you uh, would have the uh, the uh, capability of uh, going to locations and uh, you know looking for Bigfoot and go to people's houses and stuff. If you ever get that opportunity, I would love for you to come here. You would have the time of your life. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, I mean, it's it's a perfect I mean, example of of a type mm-hmm, of situation mm-hmm, I would mm-hmm, like to mm-hmm. look into. And yeah, Mark, what yeah. you're talking about is, yeah, I'll talk about it for a few minutes. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm working towards being able to go full time with the podcast. And uh, mm-hmm. if I get, I figured it out, if I get a certain amount of uh, Patreon subscribers, and I, I think it's like pretty much the go- new goal is uh, 700 uh New And I think we're up to like, we just got like five the other day, but yeah, that's the main goal is to a lot of people, you know, they have things going on and I want to be able to actually see it and uh, see it with my own eyes and be able to talk to them face to face. A lot of people won't talk unless it's face to face in person. Yeah. So uh, we, we, treat, we treat you like family and you would get all the recordings you wanted if you yeah. ever came here. Yeah, I, pre- I appreciate that, Mark. Every- yeah. Hey. You would get every recording in the book because all you'd have to do <laughs> right. is, is go out here with us after dark yeah. and uh, build a little fire and just let them come to you. You wouldn't have to go looking for them. They'll come to you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. I'll keep that in mind. Um, so what questions? Yeah. The, the, the last two questions. So number one, uh, has there ever been a, Bigfoot related story you've heard over the years in your area where if it happened to you, uh, you would not be going back out into the place where it happened. Um, uh, I've never heard, uh, you know, Randy, uh, the guy that lives behind me, uh, now or so, 
uh, he's told me about a few. He said they got all his chickens. They got 35 of his chickens last year. Wow. Uh, but I've never heard of, yeah. Now, when I first answered that question, I, I'm not afraid to go in the woods. I go in the woods here lately every day looking for mushrooms, but I'm not going to do it after dark. Mm. But, um, but uh, these things are afraid of humans in the daylight. But I'm going to tell you something. After dark, they're not afraid of humans. Wow! Yeah, they don't like they don't they don't like us for some reason, you know. They don't like us for some reason or another, but uh, they don't want anything to do with humans, from what I've gathered, being gotcha. here around them, you know, twenty four seven. But they're scared to death of us. But um, but now after dark, their fear goes away, sure. here at least. Yeah. But in the daytime, you know, in the daytime, they keep their distance and they're scared to death of us. But I've, I've never uh, heard of a story other than Randy, of course, my neighbor over here. You know, she shot at one last year. Right. Or yeah. not at one. She shot up in the air to scare one off. Right. And um, uh, no, I've never heard of a story, Jeremiah, that I would be afraid to go back into the woods. And I was afraid last year when I found out what they were. I didn't go in the woods for a little while. I was, you know, I was mm. still trying to fill these things out. I remember that. I still yeah. trying to fill them out. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to fill them out because I didn't know how dangerous they was. But then I realized after a short period of time that, you know, if they wanted to hurt me, they could have hurt me, you know, 25 years ago. Absolutely. But uh, no, I, I still, uh, I don't hunt anymore, but it's it's not because of them. Yeah. I'm not afraid to go out and get the tree stand with a high-powered rifle, you know. Gotcha. If I hunt it again, no, I'm not, I'm not afraid to hunt because of it. I'm glad. I'm but, glad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. Right. No, I'm not afraid. I go in the woods every day around here, you know. But, <laughs> exactly. But, you know, if I if I take a notion to. Last but, question. Uh, like I said, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Anybody who wants to come here and experience Bigfoot, mm -hmm. you're welcome. You're welcome. I'll treat you. I'll treat you like royalty. You can get all the night sounds you want, and I don't think that they will retaliate against me. You know, I don't think by bringing, you know, that's something you got to keep in mind. And, uh, you know, if you have someone come to your place, that these, see, we don't never have no company. And you always have to bear in mind, uh, sometimes uh, if you wish to bring people maybe somewhere like here, that they might retaliate against you after having a bunch of people here, you know, well, taking yeah. pictures and videos and sounds. But I don't think these would retaliate, Jeremiah. These are pretty peaceful creatures around here. Yeah, yeah they don't it's, that's a tricky thing, you know, when you introduce yeah, something is. new into the mm -hmm. the scenario, and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if if people take you up on this, you, they're pretty much yeah. you know take it, they're it's on it's on them, you know. It's like you can't yeah. guarantee what'll happen exactly uh, if it's exactly. peaceful or not, but um, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, you know, I wouldn't think nothing would happen to us after they left. I don't think they would retaliate against mm -hmm. us because they like us. Now, my neighbor up the road has got horses, a okay. bunch of horses, and he he ain't never had no problem out of his horses. Nobody around here I know of, uh, you know. Now there's been a few dogs injured. Our dogs have been injured. My neighbor's two dogs have been injured, right. but they've not been killed. And that tells you a lot right there. You know, they might throw a stick or something at them and hurt their hips or, or you know, uh, maim them a little bit, but they ain't killed them, you know. Right. And now, and that was last year, they ain't done nothing lately, but now they did get a hold of my cat about a week ago and pulled its rear uh, hind leg out of socket. But, uh, you know... And we have come home and our cat be on top of the house. We have seen oh, that quite wow, a few times. Really? Well, oh yeah. What oh, it is, man. these young ones, the big ones don't fool with our cat, but the young these young Bigfoots, they're not trying to catch our cat. And I know they have more than once. And I know that's what hurt our cat, our tomcat. He's five years old. And I'm going to tell you something. He won't back down from the biggest dog on the face of the earth. This, this cat we've got is fearless. I've seen him back down pit bulls. This, uh, tell me about how fierce our cat is. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Hey, um, he went back down from a coat, from a fox, or nothing. No. But now one of these young big quicks did get a hold of him, though I know for a fact, and pull a, his rear his, right. his rear leg out of sight. And broke his leg, too. But I was telling mm. Jeremiah, we've come home quite a few times and our cat be on top of the house, ain't we? Yeah, they put him up there. They put him up there. Mm -hmm. What it is, they get kind of rough with him. Yeah. I don't think they mean to hurt him, Jeremiah. I think they're just playing with him, and he bites them, and maybe they do something to him after right. that. You know, that's exactly. what I think happened. 
you got some more for me. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Jeremiah, I'll let you go. I might be on here a little too long tonight, but there's so much to tell and so much I haven't told. Can I ask you one the one last question and then I'll let you go? Yeah. All right. Ask all right. me anything. Now, this is a this is out of left field. So uh you obviously have Bigfoot interactions in your area. Are there other things like uh I don't know if you've heard of Dogman or any other things that are reported in your area as well? Yeah, no. Mm-mm, I've never heard of anything. I've never seen anything like that, or right, I've good. never heard of anything like that. Good, good. Yeah. That's good. I um, think you have your no. hands full with what you got. So. Oh, I do have. <laughs> I do have. I mean, it is what it is, Jeremiah. They're standing out there right now looking looking in the house. I mean, we got the front. See, I have to have this window open in order to talk on a phone or right. use uh, uh, use cell service. Um if I don't have this window, if I don't have the curtains pulled back, I can't get service. So I have no choice. If I want to get on my phone, I have to keep this window open, and that's how they see me, you know. But uh, Mark, thank you so much. Sit, yeah, yeah, you're welcome, Jeremiah. I want to thank you. You know, we tried to get, we tried to do this once, once or twice before, and we were both sick. I know we were. You know? <laughs> You know, I had COVID once, and I was sick yeah. another time, and, uh, and then you was sick. And so this is our third time, me trying to get on here, and I really appreciate it. And I just want you to know you'll always be a close friend of mine. Well, uh, and, I appreciate that, know. Mark. The The feeling is mutual, and uh, yeah. definitely uh, I feel like I've known you keep... a long time. Yeah. Jeremiah, I feel like I've known you all my life. Mm. You know, of course, we have interacted a lot together. Over that, the that's true. Night, that's you know? true. Hopefully our paths will cross one day, but uh, Mark, always a pleasure to have you on. And uh, thank you so much for for sharing what's happened this last year. Yeah, thank you, Jeremiah. You have a nice evening. Just want to take a few minutes to say thank you to you, all my listeners, for listening to the podcast. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed, share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at BigfootSociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. All right, I'm going to use this space uh, this week to announce that I'll be at the Sasquatch Summerfest in Oak Ridge, Oregon as an attender. I won't be presenting or anything, but I'll be hanging out trying to interview people that have had Bigfoot encounters. If you're from the Oak Ridge, Oregon area or surrounding and you've had a Bigfoot experience, please contact me directly, BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Also, Priscilla was nice enough that if you get your tickets through SasquatchSummerFest.com and use code Bigfoot Society, you can get 50% off the cost of your tickets, which is a big amount. So uh, code Bigfoot Society to get 50% off your tickets, SasquatchSummerFest.com, and uh, helps out the podcast as well. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it. One more thing. Okay, here's the deal. So we're at the point, guys, where it is, there's no stopping us. We are going to full-time podcast no matter what, but I need your help to get there. I figured it out and we need approximately 700 more people in the Patreon in order to reach our goal of going full-time. As you heard Mark say in this interview, Uh, actually able to go to places, um, people that have been having Bigfoot activity, interview them face-to-face, check it out for myself, all that good stuff. If you guys can, guys, this is is the time. If you can at any time become a supporting member of the Bigfoot Society, go to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society I would appreciate it. It's going to help us get to the next level, uh, pretty much the final level. You guys are amazing for listening. If you can't become a supporting member, please share this episode everywhere you can. Share it with anyone who's into Bigfoot encounters. And that means a world to me as well. 
Thank you all for listening and we'll see you next time.